Hello everyone, welcome back. Aside from filming my monthly favorites videos, my next favorite video, type of video to film, is a trying new makeup. So that's what I'm doing today. I am going to, for the first time, try out some makeup that I received in PR and some products I picked up on recent shopping trips to Ulta and Sephora. I would say that the majority of the products you'll be seeing me use in this video are brand new. They've only been out for the last week or two. However, I think a couple of the items have been out for longer than that. They're just new to me. And I'm starting with one of the new Makeup Forever primers. They just reformulated and relaunched like seven or eight new primers. I am very lucky that they did send them all to me and I have been slowly making my way through each formula. I've tried the hydrating primer and also the pore refining primer. I think I used that in one of my recent videos. And today I am going to try the Shine Control Primer because I do have oily skin and I'm going to be wearing a more, or testing out a more radiant foundation. All of the new primers come in the same packaging and I am just gonna keep this in my T-zone, in the areas that I get very oily. So right in here. This is making my skin feel a little tight. It has sort of a tightening effect. So that's interesting. This has a very interesting feel. So now for foundation, I am testing out the L'Oreal Age Perfect Radiant Serum Foundation. This has a broad spectrum SPF 50. It contains antioxidants and it also has a concentrated serum within it. I'm not sure how long this product has been out. I think it's pretty new. I've only recently started hearing a lot of people rave about it, especially for mature skin. So I had to try it. I chose the shade Natural Buff. And to apply it, I'm gonna use this new brush that I just got from Revlon. It is called the Buffing Foundation Brush. Okay, I'm gonna put about that much on top to start with. Oh, I think I chose a decent color. It's a little yellow, but that's okay. I like this brush. It's pretty soft. This is giving me a medium coverage. It doesn't say on here what the coverage is supposed to be. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't do much research on this. I was just listening to people say how good it was for mature skin. And yeah, it's a nice medium coverage. It's a little bit less coverage, I would say, than my um, Estee Lauder Futurist. But I'm gonna try it now with my Stands Out sponge, the sponge I use in nearly all my videos. This sponge tends to give me more coverage with foundations. And by the way, I don't use this wet. People ask me this every time. You do not need to wet this sponge. You wet it the first time, but then after that, you don't need to wet it. And so let's see if this gives more coverage. Yep, yep, yep. It's definitely giving more coverage. And it's actually going on a lot nicer with the sponge, a lot nicer. Wow, this is nice. It's very skin-like. I'm gonna add a little bit more on this side using the sponge. I'm getting my nose. Okay, I think this looks very pretty. It has a little bit of a glow to it, which I don't mind, except I do worry that my natural oils are going to come through and the foundation will break up or look excessively shiny. That's my worry. Hopefully this primer will help. And what I'll do is before I take this makeup off for the night, I will take some footage with my cell phone and record just a quick little update or give you my quick thoughts on how the makeup held up. And then I will more thoroughly tell you how I felt about everything in my February favorites and fails video. Okay, I'm popping on a little eye primer. This is not new. As always, the products used will be listed and linked in the description box. Now for concealer, I purchased this 
Revolution Eye Bright Illuminating Under Eye Concealer. I have been hearing that this is supposedly a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Away Concealer, which is one of my favorites. The shade range of this product definitely left something to be desired. I think there were only nine, eight or nine shade options. I chose light. So yes, the packaging and applicator are very similar to the Charlotte Tilbury. I'm gonna start twisting. Okay, I'm doing a lot of twisting. One eternity later. I like the color. It's not too yellow. It's covering pretty well. It's definitely giving me a brightening effect. It feels nice. It feels creamy, but not overly so. I find that when concealers are too creamy, they are more prone to caking and settling into fine lines. Now, I did purchase something that I thought I was going to use for contour and highlight. It is the BFF Alondra and Elsie Snatched Face Palette from BH Cosmetics. I have to be honest with you, I have no clue who Alondra and Elsie are. Apparently, they are very popular influencers. Because I have teenagers, I feel like I'm at least aware of most Gen Z influencers. However, I have teen boys, so maybe that's why I don't know who they are. But apparently they're extremely popular because these products sold out so quickly. I got the last face palette and I went the second day, the day after they were released in Ulta stores. So I grabbed the last one, bought it, took it home, went to take it out of the packaging and it's busted. It is so busted. The bronzer, the contour powder, the highlighter, all busted. So for contour, I think what I'm gonna do is use the palette that I'm going to use on my eyes, which is the new Transitions palette from Dominique Cosmetics. I purchased this from Beautylish and it is a multi-use eye and face palette. You are supposed to be able to do your eye makeup, obviously. There is supposed to be a shade in here that will set your concealer and give a brightening effect a shade for contouring, so let's see. The pans are a lot bigger than I expected, and I like that it has a mirror. This is really, really nice packaging. I think before I get into that though, I am going to quickly do my brows. The brow product I'm going to use is new, but I've already shown it in another video. It was in my Jason Wu brand review. This is the Groomed by Mr. Wu brow pencil, so I'm gonna go do that, and then we'll get started on the eyeshadow. Okay, I'm back, brows are done. So let's dig into this transition palette. I think I'm gonna try this shade Toffee for my contour. Let's see how that goes. Not bad. It's not the type of shade I would typically use for contour. I was hoping there would be like a more brownie taupe shade, and there is this mocha shade However, I feel like that's gonna to be too dark for me and it might look dirty. So I'm gonna stick with toffee. I think I'm changing my mind on the foundation already. I feel like it's not sticking to my nose. At all. So because this is an all matte palette, I'm gonna do an all matte look and I have not done that in a while. I'm going to take a fluffy crease brush and go into the shade Caramel. Run that through my crease. And now using a smaller crease brush, I'm gonna go into the shade Cinnamon. I don't do plums that often. And I'm gonna keep that more so in the crease. With that first color, I went a little bit higher than my natural crease, and with this shade, I'm keeping it right smack in the middle. And then I'm gonna use a flat brush and apply the shade Natural or Frothy? I think I'm gonna do Natural. 
to my lid. So all of these shadows are going on very nicely. They're richly pigmented, they're easy to blend. So far on the formula, she did a great job. Now using an even tinier brush, my favorite Samey 2.5. I'm gonna go into the shade Coal, which is a beautiful gray. And I'm gonna apply that just to the outer corners of my eye. I'm just gonna pat it and use my finger to blend. I'm gonna go back with that crease brush and blend. And then I'm gonna use that flat brush again and apply a little bit more natural to the lid. Then I'm gonna take the shade Frothy, which is a little bit lighter, and pop that underneath my brow bone. Actually, I think I want to lighten the lid just a little, so I'm going to add frothy to that area. Yeah, I like this better. That's better. Now this shade, frothy, I believe is supposed to be used for setting your under eyes as well, or brightening your under eyes. So I'm going to take a little bit and run it under my eye. What do you know, that worked. And it doesn't make my under eye look dry. Okay. I'm impressed. Now I'm gonna line my eyes with the shade Smoky. It looks like a black. In my opinion, the shade is not a true black. It's like a really, really dark, dark gray with a hint of blue. I can't believe that I'm getting such minimal fallout, even from this dark shade. There's a little bit right there, but usually when I use a matte eyeshadow like this, there's fallout everywhere. Now I'm just taking a little bit more cinnamon and darkening up the outer corners. Now for the lower lash line, I'm gonna run a little bit of the shade Cinnamon right along the bottom. Now since my highlight palette came busted, I am just gonna use this frothy color once again and pop that in my tear duct as an inner corner highlight. Now I'm gonna curl my lashes and apply mascara. I am going to use this new mascara from Revlon. It is the So Fierce Big Bad Lash. Okay, I like the wand giving me some nice volume. Not a ton of length, but some nice volume. Not bad. I do have some new lashes I wanna try. These are from Velour. They are the Vegan Luxe Lashes. I've worn the style Secret Weapon already in another video that I think will have gone up before this one, but I'm not certain. And I think I've also shown them on Instagram. But the style I'm gonna to use today are called Wispy Me Away. 
So this is what they look like. Always measure and trim. Oh, I think I might like the style even more than Secret Weapon. It gives me that cat eye effect. All right, so if you saw that video that I recently put up with Megan Lombardi, who was a Charlotte Tilbury pro artist, if you saw that video, you know that she had me do my lips before my cheeks because she likes to apply blush after she sees the intensity of the rest of the makeup. So I think I'm gonna do that today. I'll do my lips next and then go to the new blush that I have to show you that I'm not even sure is out yet. It is the Laura Mercier Blush Color Infusion shades. Guava, passion fruit, bellini, and watermelon. So I'm gonna try one of those momentarily, but we're gonna do lips next. And in case you did not see that video with Megan, I will link it in the description box. I'm also going to be using her tip about waiting until the end to apply powder as well. So the only thing I have new for lips is this Filler Instinct Plumping Lip Gloss from NYX that I think has been out for maybe a month. I hope I'm not wrong, I could be wrong, but it's new to me. So I'm gonna try that over one of my favorite new lip combos. I think I showed this maybe in a haul. It's the new Natasha Denona I Need a Nude Lip Crayon. This is the shade two. And the lipstick is the new Natasha Denona Amorosa. And so this gloss is number zero three, Sparkling Please. And I'm just popping that in the center of my lips. Nice combo. I really like this trio. Ooh, I can feel the plumping. It tingles a little bit. So maybe not plumping. I don't know if these things actually plump, but there's a tingle. All right, I am so excited to try one of these new blushes. They also sent me a new blush brush. Oh, this one looks very light. This guava, super light. Watermelon. Ooh, it, hmm. Doesn't seem to be much of a difference between watermelon and passion fruit. Well, slightly. And then lastly, there is Bellini. Oh, Bellini is definitely more peach. These are all very similar. Let's try watermelon. Why not? Actually, no. Let's try guava to see how light it really is. See if it even shows up on me. No, <laughs> there's literally nothing. I mean, I suppose if you had the fairest fair skin, you might get some color from this blush but I'm getting barely anything. Okay, well, just so we're even, I'll try a little bit on the other side. I mean, I guess there's a tiny bit of color. I just really like blush, so I want something that's gonna show up. Let's try watermelon. This is very light too, but it has it looks like it's completely matte, but why am I seeing a sheen? I'm seeing like a glow. Maybe I should read the paper that it came with. With its sheer, there you go. Read, Risa, read. With its sheer buildable and silky smooth formula, the Laura Mercier new blush color infusion shades are the perfect date night essentials. Pure color pigments feel weightless and apply evenly to the skin for a sweet, healthy looking flush of color that will last for 10 hours, no matter where the night ends up taking you, which is nowhere these days. Make it official with our four new shades, Guava, Passion Fruit, Bellini, Watermelon. Oh, and look here, Guava, Light Pink Coral Matte, Passion Fruit, Warm Coral Pink Sheen, 
Bellini, Light Peach Coral Matte, and Watermelon, Cool Pink Sheen. Yeah. I learned my lesson. Read about the new products before testing them on camera. Well, this is great because now I don't need a highlighter. This is gonna work for my highlighter. I do not like this foundation on me. Mm -mm, I can tell you that right now. It's too shiny, even with the matte primer underneath it. It just doesn't look that nice on me. I like the blush. It's really pretty. I didn't purchase a new powder, so I'm just gonna use my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Powder. And like Megan showed, I am twisting the powder into my skin, like press and twirl, press and twirl. Well, that looks better. Okay. This foundation definitely looks better powdered if you're oily. So now that the look is complete, I'm gonna quickly run through everything I tried and give you my thoughts on it so far. The foundation and primer and concealer, where did that go? So far, so good. I will, as I mentioned, film a little update that I'll insert momentarily that will tell you how it all held up after, I'm assuming at least eight to 10 hours. But right now, they're all looking pretty good. Um, my under eyes don't look dry. My skin doesn't look overly shiny. It did prior to applying the powder, which concerned me a little bit. And I still am concerned that it's not going to look this good after eight hours. Okay, I've only had this foundation on for about seven and a half hours, but I don't need any more time to realize that this foundation just is not working for me. It is not a good one for oily skin. The only reason why I tried this foundation is because I have had such good luck with the Estee Lauder Futurist, which is supposed to be similar in that they're both hydrating, meant for more mature skin, medium coverage, but this one just really broke up in my T-zone, even over that mattifying primer. I might give it another chance without the primer, but I can't imagine it doing better with no mattifying primer. It doesn't do me any favors as far as smoothing or just the overall look of my skin, which is what I like a foundation to do. I like it to improve the look of my skin. I do think that this would be a great foundation for someone who has drier skin with less texture because this just did not, did not work for me. The mascara from Revlon was pretty nice. We'll see if I get any flaking from it. The eyeshadow palette. This really is a wonderful, practical palette. It's travel friendly. The pan sizes are good. The formula is excellent. Well, I would say most of the shades in here are really neutral. The shade Hazelnut is warm, but I find these browns to be very neutral. And then of course the charcoal shades lean more to the cool side. I'm definitely looking forward to playing around with this some more. I love the look of these Velour Vegan Lashes. The Laura Mercier Blush, I like it. I'm not wowed by this, but it's pretty and I do like a blush that can perform as a highlighter as well. It doesn't seem to be emphasizing a lot of texture. Sometimes glowy blushes have a tendency to do that, especially on my skin that does have a lot of large pores, but I think it looks pretty nice. It's great for someone who wants to be very careful with their blush. It's for someone who likes a sheer flush of color. I personally prefer a blush that packs a little bit more punch. I will say that the formula is very nice. It's very silky. It doesn't go on blotchy. I really like that. So lastly, the lip combo. I think I already said earlier that I love this entire combo. As for this NYX Filler Instinct Gloss, it's a pretty gloss. I don't think it does any plumping, but it's a pretty color. It feels nice on the lips and I can definitely see myself using this over a lot of lip colors. And the tingling doesn't last very long. It lasts for about a minute or two because it's tingling again now since I just reapplied, but it disappeared pretty quickly. All right, was there anything else? Well, there was the BFF face palette that I have to now go return. Yeah, so I think that's it. 
If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave them for me in the comments. And if you did enjoy this video, I always appreciate you giving it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button and join the Risa Does Makeup family. I do try to upload new videos at least twice per week. You can also find me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter under the same username. It's all Risa Does Makeup. Thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video.